Gotta hook them in. All right. Woo, that's how we do it. Welcome to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today we're showing you the amazing power of the brush tool. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And I'm so excited about this episode. As a part of our 30 days of Photoshop, we're gonna show you the brush tool, which is one of my favorite tools in Photoshop. And I think it gets a little bit like unnoticed most of the time, because it's like the brush tool, it's pretty simple. But there are some amazing things that you can do with this tool. In this video, we're gonna show you how to use the brush tool to dodge and burn your photos, sculpting light and making your images more interesting. We're also gonna show you how to take a regular picture of a cloud and turn that into a custom brush and use that to paint fog into the background of our image. We've got an awesome tutorial for you. Let's jump into Photoshop. So starting off with our sample images, you can actually download these on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So up until now, I've been using a standard mouse for editing in Photoshop. But when it comes to using the brush tool, I highly recommend using a pressure sensitive tablet. You can use this with other tools as well. You don't have to buy one of these just for the brush tool. Basically, this works a lot like a pen on a piece of paper. So the harder you press, the more of effect you're going to have in Photoshop. So not only is it very much like actually drawing, but I can press harder and softer to have more or less brush or more or less paint, digital paint in this case, on my canvas. So we've had a lot of wonderful free tutorials on setting up and using the Wacom tablet. We'll link to one right up here if you wanna learn more about that. But for now, let's go ahead and show you the benefits of using one of these and show you the brush tool in Photoshop. By the way, all this stuff you can totally do with a mouse as well. So let's go ahead and start off with our first image here. We're gonna hit F4 full screen and go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Now, my goal here is just to basically take the highlights of this image and enhance them a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is hit B for the brush tool. I'm gonna right click and just go to a regular soft round brush. Okay, this is the brush that's included in Photoshop. So let's make a new layer, and instead of making a regular layer, we're gonna make a curves adjustment layer because we wanna brighten up those highlights. So let's go to our adjustment layers. We're gonna go to curves, and I'm gonna click here and brighten that up a little bit. Now, as of now, this is visible everywhere. We don't want that. I wanna just paint in the areas where I want it to be visible. So let's hit Control or Command I to invert our layer mask, making it black. Okay. Now it's time for a couple of keyboard shortcuts that are really gonna help you with your brush. So the first one, hold Control and Option, and then click and drag from the left to the right, and that's gonna make your brush larger and smaller. Up and down is gonna make your brush harder and softer. And the PC keyboard shortcuts are on your screen now. So Control, Option, click and drag left to the right, you can see my brush gets smaller and larger, and up and down to go harder and softer. So we're just gonna basically be painting with a soft edge brush. Now, before we get into painting, I wanna show you guys the difference between flow and opacity with your brush, because it's incredibly important. So let's go ahead and start off with just a bright red color here. I'm gonna click on my color picker. There we go, and a bright red color. We're gonna start with a flow and opacity of 100%. There we go. Obviously, that we, we all expected that. Now let's go ahead and bring our opacity down. I'm gonna bring our opacity down to 20% and take a look at what happens when I paint over my image. Now I'm actually going over the same place over and over again, you can see this, but it doesn't continue to do any type of a buildup effect, okay? What I have to do is release my cursor or my uh, trackpad or my pen, whatever have you, and then paint again and we get another 20%. And then you can see I can paint again and I get another 20% on top of that and then paint again and another 20% on that. Now the problem being is that this is not exactly a very like smooth transition. I just, I'm like stacking 20% on top of each other but you can still see the border from like, you know, this 20% to this 20%, especially for instance, if I were to just put like a white there we go, like a white layer under that. See how e like very obvious that is? It's just like 20% over here and then a little bit more and more and more. And that's where they overlap. Now, this is a little bit of an unnatural way of painting because it 
this basically like nothing in real life would actually work like that. Like if you had a marker in your hand and you're painting on a piece of paper, if you paint over an area more and more and more, it's gonna like get darker and darker and have a buildup effect. So opacity doesn't allow you to have the buildup effect. That's where flow comes in. So let's go ahead and create a new layer up here. I'm gonna bring my brush opacity to 100% and we're gonna bring our flow down to about 10%. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint on my image and you can see if I decide to go over an area more and more and more, we get a very natural buildup. I'm not seeing like edges. This is just a very, very nice smooth gradient. And if I use an even lower flow, let's say I use a flow of like 5%, there we go. You can see how beautifully and smoothly I'm able to integrate this with, in this case, my painting red on a white background. But imagine I was trying to paint something on a photograph you could see I'm able to create this beautiful transition simply with one brush stroke. It's incredibly helpful. So I recommend using flow over opacity. In fact, I almost never use brush opacity. I pretty much have my opacity at 100% all the time. I'm mostly using flow. So let's go ahead and show you how to do it. Now here in our curves adjustment layer, remember this curves adjustment layer, we just made things brighter. I have a black layer mask on here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start painting white on my layer mask using a really low flow, using a flow of about 5%, okay? Now to change your flow, you can simply just type in opacity or type in your flow. You can click on these words and drag them to the left and the right, okay? You can click up there and just type in five and hit enter. Or you can use one through zero on the copy your keyboard. If you're with your brush tool, that's gonna to change your opacity. Like if I hit the number four, you can see it changes my opacity to 40, zero is back to 100. And if you hold shift, you can click on one through zero. Like if I hit shift eight, my flow goes to 80%. If I hit shift zero five quickly, my flow will go to 5%, okay? So very, very helpful to know how to change your flow of your brush. So again, I just use, I hold down shift and I click on uh, my numbers at the top. So we talked about our keyboard shortcut for making your brush larger and smaller. That's control option, click and drag, okay? Now you can also use the open and close brackets on your keyboard to make your brush larger and smaller as well. It goes by smaller increments. So it can be kind of helpful. For instance, I wanna basically highlight some of these areas right here in my image. So I want my brush to be about the same size as the areas that I highlight. Okay, so as I go for a little bit of a smaller area, I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller. If I go for a larger area, I'm gonna make my brush a little bit larger. There we go. Now I'm not really using much of the pressure sensitivity built into this tablet at the moment. You can actually have pressure control things like your flow or your opacity or even your brush size. And that's why I use it primarily is because I get a lot more control over what I'm doing. But right now to keep things simple, I'm just going with a very simple application here. There we go. So if you're following along with a, a trackpad or a mouse, you're basically gonna get the same exact result that I am, because I'm not really working much with pressure sensitivity. Okay, so I'm finding all the areas that have some highlight that I wanna, you know, like make a little bit brighter to make them stand out and I'm just enhancing them a little bit more. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and take a look at the before and after. I'll just turn this off and on and we can see what I was able to paint in and see how natural that looks. It's because we used a low flow that we're able to get a very natural effect. So this is all with the brush tool. Like I realize we're combining this with a curves adjustment layer, but literally I'm just painting with a brush tool on my curves adjustment layer. So let's hold Alt or Option and take a look at the layer mask. That's what the layer mask looks like right now. That's where I painted white to make it visible. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with black. So we'll create another curves adjustment layer, make it a little bit further down. Okay, we'll invert our layer mask again. And now I wanna darken some places. There we go. So we're darkening these areas. Again, just using a very low flow, 5% here. And if I paint over an area over and over again, I'm gonna have a buildup effect. 
So I can choose how much I'd like an area to be either lighter or darker with dodging and burning. There we go, fantastic. And this helps me to make the landscape. You can do this with people, by the way, as well. It helps you to make anything in an image look a little bit more three-dimensional. It carves out your highlights and shadows. There we go, look at that, beautiful. That's looking fantastic. So let's go ahead and turn that off and on as well. So I just took the existing shadows that were there and I painted them a little bit darker. So let's turn them both off. There's our before and the after. Look how much more rich the landscape looks. How much like it looks like light is kind of like shimmering off the surface. And literally we're just kind of painting with light here in Photoshop. So all of that was just using a regular soft round brush. But what happens when we start adding shapes into the brush itself? So for this next portion of the tutorial, we're actually gonna make a brush out of a cloud and then we're gonna paint clouds or fog back into our image. Really, really cool. So we're gonna go ahead, pull up our brush tool cloud image. There we go. Now, first thing I need to do is kind of prep this a little bit to actually work well as a brush, uh, as the shape of a brush, because I don't need everything to be soft round all the time. I, I can have the cloud be the shape. So what we're gonna do is double click here on our background, just convert this to a regular layer. And now I wanna use my levels. So I'm gonna hit Controller Command L for our levels, and we're gonna make our blacks just way darker. There we go, something like that works pretty well, and we'll hit okay. Because really what I want is just a completely white background with a black cloud on it. So now we're gonna desaturate this. We're gonna go to image, down to adjustments, and down to desaturate, okay? And then I'm gonna get go to image, down to adjustments, and to invert. Because again, what I'm looking for is a black cloud or a dark cloud on a perfectly white background. Now, if you're not sure whether your background's perfectly white, you can actually right click out here and go down to select custom color and just choose white and it'll change your background color. So now this is perfectly white and I can see obviously that my background of the cloud is not perfectly white. So let's hit controller command L for this and I'm just gonna take my white point and make this a bit brighter until the background is perfectly white. Cool, that looks good. Now we're actually just about ready to make this into a cloud. Well, it's already a cloud, but we're ready to make it into a brush. I need to make it a little smaller because it's huge right now. And that just is gonna really slow down Photoshop if we make a brush that's this large. So we'll go to image and down to image size. Okay, and we'll just make this 1500 pixels wide. So let's hit okay there. All right, and we can just put the background as light gray so we can see what we're actually working with. So now let's go ahead and turn this into a selection. Controller Command A to make this a selection. We're gonna go to Edit and down to Define Brush Preset. And I'm just gonna call this Cloud. There we go. Now I'll deselect and then go back to my original image. So let's go back to our original image, create a new layer and hit B for the brush tool. And you can see I'm gonna paint with a cloud. So I'm here just painting with a cloud. Red is my foreground color, so I'm literally just painting red clouds wherever I go. You know, of course you can follow along, you've got all the sample images, but we're also gonna include the final brush here, so you'll just be able to load that. So obviously we don't wanna paint with uh, red, we wanna paint with, you know, this like fog color in the background. And I need to make it look a little bit different than, you know, just that. I wanna add some variability into it. So we're gonna go to Window and down to Brush Settings. There we are. And I'm gonna start turning some things on that allow me a little bit more of an organic, natural shape. So we're gonna to go to Shape Dynamics and I'm gonna turn on Size Jitter, which just makes some of these larger and some of them smaller. We're gonna turn on our Angle Jitter and you can see already it's like, oh wow, yeah, it's looking very different. We're gonna turn on our Scattering just a bit. There we go. We're gonna turn Transfer on and I'm gonna go up and bring up our opacity jitter so some of these are more visible and some of these are less visible. So you can see all of these different things that I'm adding in here, they change how each one of these is laid down. And of course I can still change the color. Let me just hit undo a couple times or clear that. Like this is just a regular brush. I'm just changing the shape of it, you know, so I could make it blue if I wanted to. All right. There we go. So let's go ahead and clear that now. And I think we're actually looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and space this apart just a little bit. 
All right, and sample this color. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and save this out. We're gonna go to our little menu item here. I'm gonna go to new brush preset and we're gonna call this Flurn Cloud. If I can spell it. There we go and hit okay. Now, by the way, if you wanna load this into uh, Photoshop, cause it's, it'll be included in your download, just hit B for your brush tool, right click, and then go to your little uh, gear icon and go to import brushes and then click on the ABR file, okay? So click on the ABR file that's included with your download. And then if you right click with your brush tool, it'll just show up here at the very bottom, Flurn Cloud. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this cloud. I can make my brush larger and smaller, just like anything else. I'm gonna use this cloud to paint like actual like cloud detail in the background there, okay? And instead of just using a soft round brush, because again, a soft round brush, that would just give you, you know, you might be able to make this area lighter, but it wouldn't give you any additional texture. See what I'm doing in here is actually like adding this fog in, but it's adding the texture of a cloud too. So it makes it the overall effect look a lot more realistic because we actually have the texture of all this rolling in as well. And there we have it. Look at this, we can just turn this off and on. I can, you can add fog to any image you want now. See, I can put it in the foreground here if I want to. It's incredibly easy to do. Uh, you have a fog brush now at your disposal and you know how to create it. Let's just go ahead and undo that because I mostly just want the fog there in the background, maybe a tiny bit over here as well. All right. Yeah, you know what? I just like it in the background. I think that makes it look the best. So there we have, look at all those amazing things we were literally able to do just with our brush tool. So let's go ahead and turn these off. There's our before and the after, all of that with the brush tool. And you get this cloud brush as a bonus download for this episode. Just click on the link right down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this 30 days of Photoshop series. If you haven't already done so, be sure to join the series. You can do that by clicking the link right down below. We'll send you a calendar with a list of episodes so you can follow along. Of course, you get all of the sample images and the downloadable assets, as well as special bonuses that are only included with this series. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye everyone.